neurogenic intermittent claudication is pain in the gluteal area, thighs, and calves that occurs while walking and is lessened when inactive. It also is intensified by bending backwards and lessened by bending forwards. Hello everyone and welcome to Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. And today I will be covering neurogenic intermittent claudication. Neurogenic intermittent claudication is often abbreviated to NIC. Intermittent claudication refers to leg symptoms that are elicited by walking and relieved by rest. Neurogenic means the source of the condition is pressure on nerves. Neurogenic intermittent claudication is associated with lumbar central stenosis. I already did a video on lumbar central stenosis, so I'm not going to get into too much detail on what it is, but I will put a link to that video in the description box below. Claudication can occur for two primary reasons. Vascular, which means it is related to the blood vessels, and neurogenic, meaning that it is related to the nervous system. Although the symptoms of both types are fairly similar, the reasons behind the cause are different. Vascular claudication stems from a lack of adequate blood supply from the arteries, while neurogenic claudication is a nerve compression issue. Neurogenic intermittent claudication is usually the result of narrowing of the spinal canal, known as central stenosis. Any process that narrows the spinal canal in the lumbosacral area may result in neurogenic intermittent claudication. Intrinsic contributing factors that can narrow the lumbosacral spinal canal include a disc herniation, a disc bulge, facet joint hypertrophy, ligamentum flavum hypertrophy, and spondylolithesis. Usually the source is hypertrophy of the superior facet articular process of the inferior vertebrae. These factors or factor narrow the spinal canal and place pressure on nerves, thus leading to symptoms along the course of these nerves. Neurogenic intermittent claudication results from central canal stenosis, whereas lumbar radiculopathy is the sequela to lateral recess stenosis. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. Watching this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. If you think you have neurogenic intermittent claudication or vascular intermittent claudication, please see a medical professional immediately. Do not hesitate. Please take action. Please realize that watching this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. You can see a medical professional like myself, a doctor of chiropractic, or you can see a different type of medical professional. If you are starting an exercise program, never perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms. If an exercise elicits or intensifies symptoms, please stop immediately and find a viable substitute. Never start an exercise program at a level that is too high for you. Always start all exercises at your current health, fitness, and strength levels. Please do not start at the level that you used to be at when you were younger or before symptoms started. Always start every exercise at your current health, fitness, and strength levels. The symptoms of neurogenic intermittent claudication include pain in the lower extremities, in the glutes, thighs, and calves that only occurs with activities such as walking or standing. Pain is usually equal on both sides. Symptoms are lessened when sitting or not walking. Symptoms are elicited or intensified when bending backwards, which in medical terms is called lumbar extension. An extremely important feature of neurogenic intermittent claudication is its relationship to body positioning. Lumbar extension, which is bending backwards at the lower spine, increases symptoms, and lumbar flexion, which is bending forward at the lower spine, decreases symptoms. Those with neurogenic intermittent claudication often use a stance nicknamed the simian stance because it lessens symptoms. This stance includes 
lumbar spine flexion, slight hip flexion, and slight knee flexion. The body positioning is accountable for better tolerance to walking up an incline compared to walking down an incline. Symptoms are exacerbated by walking, standing, and upright exercises. Symptoms decrease with sitting or lumbar flexion when squatting, leaning forward, or laying down. A classic presentation is lumbar extension while standing leads to development of symptoms, which promptly resolve by leaning forward 20 to 40 degrees at the waist. Additional symptoms may include general discomfort in the legs, weakness in the lower extremities, numbness, tingling, and or burning in the lower extremities. Most patients typically experience these symptoms bilaterally, which means on both sides, but some may be unilateral. Either case usually involves the entire leg. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have treated numerous cases of neurogenic intermittent claudication. As a doctor of chiropractic, the main tool that I use is what is called a chiropractic adjustment. The chiropractic adjustment helps to restore proper skeletal motion and helps to optimize nerve flow. I would check the entire spine and the entire lower extremity, including the cervical spine, which is the medical name for the neck, the thoracic spine, which is the medical name for the mid-back, and the lumbar spine, which is the medical name for the low back. I would also check the pelvis at the sacroiliac joints, and I would check the hips, the thighs, the knees, the lower leg, the ankles, and the feet. We want to check the entire chain. I would do that on the examination, and the treatment would cover the entire area also. We want to treat the entire area, not just where the symptoms are at. You want to eliminate the source of the symptoms, and restoring proper motion to the spine may help to relieve the source of the symptoms of neurogenic intermittent claudication. When you see a medical professional for neurogenic intermittent claudication, you may have imaging done of the lumbar spine and pelvis. This may include x-rays and an MRI. Injury prevention is easier, faster, and less expensive than injury rehabilitation. There are several strategies that you can implement to help to prevent the development of neurogenic intermittent claudication. First of all, seeing a doctor of chiropractic on a regular basis may help in your prevention strategies. The correction of the skeletal motion and the optimization of nerve flow may help to prevent this painful and performance limiting condition. Other strategies that you can implement include spine and core strengthening exercises, avoiding lumbar extension exercises, stretching the lumbar spine glutes and lower extremities. You can perform the Williams flexion exercises. I have a video on this series of exercises. I will put a link to it in the description box below. You can also perform a seated elevated lumbar stretch where you are sitting on a chiropractic table or a sturdy chair and stretching the spine forward. And you can also perform supine knee to chest stretches. You can perform strengthening exercises for the deep core. These include the abdominal drawing in maneuver, abdominal hollowing, which is also known as stomach vacuums, abdominal bracing, and a supine pelvic tilt. The techniques that you use to prevent this condition should also be helpful in the rehabilitation of this condition. First of all, you want to perform spine and core strengthening exercises and spine and gluteal stretching exercises. You want to avoid lumbar extension exercises or any type of exercise or position that elicits or intensifies symptoms. You want to stretch the lumbar spine, the gluteal muscles, and the lower extremities. You can perform the Williams lumbar flexion exercises. You can perform a seated lumbar stretch while sitting in a sturdy chair or a sturdy table or bench. You can perform supine knees to chest stretch, which means you are laying on your back and you are pulling the knees towards the chest. You can do it one leg at a time or both legs at a time. You can perform strengthening exercises for the deep core 
muscles. These exercises include the abdominal drawing in maneuver, stomach vacuums, which are also known as abdominal hollowing. You can perform abdominal bracing and you could perform the supine pelvic tilt. These exercises will help to strengthen the abdominal muscles. Thank you everyone for watching today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report, where I went over neurogenic intermittent claudication. Please remember, never perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms. Avoid all positions that elicits or intensifies symptoms. And please see a medical professional if you think you have this condition or if you think you are developing this condition. And please realize that viewing this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. Thank you everybody for watching today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report, where I covered neurogenic intermittent claudication. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. You could find more information on my book at my website, championshipchiropractic.com. On my website, you could also find my blog, my blog contains articles on spine health, chiropractic care, sports medicine, fitness, health, exercise, and nutrition. Again, it is championshipchiropractic.com. Please feel free to like this video. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube page. And if you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. Always remember to train hard, but train smart. Get adequate rest between your training sessions. Utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you. Stay injury free, prevent all injuries, completely rehabilitate all injuries, and accomplish your goals.